All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited to have the Special Olympics Wisconsin here with us um, and get to hear everything about inclusion and leadership. And we have many wonderful speakers. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Maggie Stripmatter and I am the um, adult program and outreach librarian here at McIntosh Memorial Library of Europa. Um, and so we are so thankful, like I said, to have everybody here and I will definitely be passing it on to you. So feel free to start whenever you are ready, Jean. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Jeannie Rovat and I'm the Vice President of Unified Leadership for Special Olympics Wisconsin. And we're so happy to be coming to you from across the state with our Unified Leadership Task Force through the power of Zoom. So our purpose today is to create encounters. So you probably know Special Olympics as a sports organization, right? And we are a sports organization at the heart and we always will be, but we also exist to fill other gaps in support for people with intellectual disabilities or ID. We are so much more than sports. We teach lifelong lessons of hard work, determination, honing skills, inclusion, and friendship. We are about making a world a more inclusive place for people with ID. We believe everyone, including you, has the obligation to break down barriers and create an inclusive environment for others, but especially for people with ID. We all know that to make a change, leadership matters. Creating a more inclusive world is no different. Together, we can create communities and opportunities for people with intellectual disabilities. It's about finding meaningful roles for people with intellectual disabilities to contribute and share their abilities. So we're hoping to create an encounter for you because many people might know about Special Olympics, but they don't know how it's relevant to them. And also many people might know someone with ID, but they haven't had the opportunity to interact. So we're gonna provide that opportunity for you to interact today. And we also just want to do a shout out because a few moments ago, we met Michael, who is an employee at your library there. And he is one of our Special Olympics athletes. And so is his brother. And so the great news is if you want to have an encounter with somebody with ID, you have someone there locally. And Maggie also knows people from your Special Olympics program there in Richland Center. So we encourage you to know them, to have opportunities to interact with them. All right, so I'm gonna pull up my slides. Don't worry, it's just a little slow with technology here. So you are seeing Dustin Plunkett. He is from Special Olympics, California. And I know Dustin because he was one of the international global messengers that traveled the world at the same time Martha Hill from Special Olympics Wisconsin did. And I love what this slide says, inclusion doesn't just happen, people leading it make it happen. So Dustin, I personally know, wants to become the executive director for Special Olympics California, right? For those of us that are in current staff and leadership roles, this may sound like, oh, could this happen? But I wanna tell you that our athlete leaders are not afraid to pursue these roles. They're not afraid to become the leaders that they need to be. So we, as people without disabilities, need to have open minds and change our perspective on what we see as leadership and to accept all abilities as leaders. Oops. So you're going to meet our Unified Leadership Task Force. So excited they're here with us today. And I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. So I'm gonna start with Edward. Hi, my name is Edward Kasten. I'm a Unified Leadership Specialist for Special Olympics Wisconsin. I also have my own TV show and a college degree, and I'm a proud dad of Ismay Starlet, a two-year-old. Wonderful. Megan. Hi, I'm Megan Gulawat. I am a Special Olympic athlete along with the Unified Leadership Specialist. As to uh, with Special Olympics Wisconsin, and I also work at Walgreens, and 
I am one out of 65 athletes representing Wisconsin in the Special Olympics USA Games in Florida in 2022. Thank you, Megan. Deb? Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Deb Moore Greenlow, and I have been a volunteer with Special Olympics for 34 years. Um, I've served in several roles, um, but recently my um, most proud role to be a part of is to be a volunteer athlete leadership coordinator and help train athletes and work with people to teach them about unified leadership. Um, I have been a coach at all levels and I was a special education teacher for 36 years um, and also been a past program coordinator, local program manager. It's great to be here. Thanks, Deb. Debbie? Hi, I'm Debbie Kluwer from Wisconsin Rapids. I am a parent, Special Olympics volunteer, Unified Leadership Task Force trainer, and part of the local committee for Special Olympic fundraisers, including the annual Polar Plunge. Nice to see you. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Let's get started. So first of all, you see the mission of Special Olympics. So again, you may know us as a sports program, but I'm gonna describe what we have in front of you here. So these 50 some words were written in 1968 by Eunice Kennedy Shriver, the founder of Special Olympics. And they are the same words today, except for one term. And that is the change the term mental retardation has been changed to intellectual disability. And the reason that happened is because athlete leaders told her that the word mental retardation was hurtful for, for them, that it was used against them. But this is the mission that stands the test of time. And you can celebrate with us because next year is Special Olympics Wisconsin's 50th anniversary. So look for us on our website or in the media because we want everybody to know about Special Olympics Wisconsin. What you see here is sports and so much more. So written in black at the top are the sports. And we have bolded for you the facts about Special Olympics, which are in our mission. And the second half written in red is the so much more. So we offer sports and so much more. And there's so much depth to Special Olympics, but we're gonna focus on four main buckets today. So these are the four priorities for Special Olympics Wisconsin. The first one is leveling the field through sport. Now, as we said, everybody's heard of us as a sports organization, right? but you might not know the depth of our sports. So we provide training and competition year round in 19 different sports. In 2019, we offered 137 competitions at the local, regional and state level. Some people think we're a once a year track meet, right? 137 competitions. In 2022, 65 athletes will be going to the USA Games in Orlando. Megan gave us a sneak peek that she's gonna be one of them. But Special Olympics is a bona fide sports program. And what makes us unique is that we not only division by age and gender, we division by ability. That means that on any given day, an athlete of any ability has a chance of winning. Delivering life-changing healthcare. People with disabilities die 13 years earlier than the typical individual. And it is not because of their disability. It's because of their lack of access to healthcare. Special Olympics is providing a wraparound service that fills this gap. We are the largest provider of health screenings in the world for people with disabilities. I'm gonna say that again. We are the largest provider of health screenings in the world for people with disabilities. And we do it all free of charge at the competitions themselves. So this service is saving lives for our athletes and it is providing the health and wellness that allows them to do their sports effectively. But it's also relevant to you because who doesn't want a doctor or a dentist or a podiatrist who has worked with people with disability and understands what it means to listen carefully to someone who might not communicate well, 
or who needs a little bit more explanation, right? We've all sat in a doctor's office and not understood something. Doctors are better providers for you because of Special Olympics. The third one, unifying generations in schools. So this is not a new program, but it's newer, 2008. We started Unified Champion Schools, a youth-centered school-focused program bringing students with and without ID together through education, sports, and youth leadership. Research shows that this is not only good for our students with ID, it's important for all students. It improves attendance, it improves academic success, and maybe most importantly, it stops bullying. When people have encounters with each other and learn about who they are as individuals, these things get better. The last one is what we're really here to talk about today, and that's creating leaders across all spectrums. And in a minute here, I'm gonna let Edward speak and show a video. But right now I'm gonna tell you about our creating leaders across all spectrums, right? Special Olympics provides free athlete leadership classes in public speaking, health, coaching, government relations, and governance. So athletes can obtain meaningful positions within Special Olympics. But the next 50 years is about unified leadership. So athlete leadership we've done since 1989. Unified leadership puts the emphasis on changing the mindset of people without disabilities or of all disabilities, right? Unified leadership creates the encounters for all of us to learn from each other. So I'm going to um, turn it over to Edward now in the spirit of unified leadership, and I'll get ready to pull up the video, Edward. Oops. You're on mute, Edward. I forgot I was on mute. Okay, thanks, Jeannie. For many years, we have been training Special Olympics athletes like me to be leaders, but not, but that's not, is not enough on its own. We also need leaders without ID like you to take responsibility for creating inclusive environments so people with ID have a chance to succeed in all areas of their lives. Here is a video to help explain. Great leaders aren't born, they're made. Thousands of hours of training, pushing beyond limits, ignoring the doubters, learning to win and lose with dignity, empathy, and courage. Special Olympics athletes have already proved that they have great potential. We simply want to empower them to fully realize it by creating the conditions in which they can thrive on and off the sports field. The unified leadership approach is about teaching inclusion, drawing on the personal experiences of athletes to create shared experiences for leaders with and without disabilities. It's about taking the lessons learned from every skill mastered, every challenge overcome, and using them. Inspiring others and showing the path to real and meaningful inclusion. It's about recognizing the key skills that athlete leaders exemplify, helping them grow, develop their capacity to lead, and share their talents with everyone. This is what our divided world needs today. This is about changing our society for the better, for all of us. Unified leaders aren't born. They rise up to the challenge when given a chance. They never give up. They will do anything to create the conditions for everyone's success. Unlocking the true power of diversity. Let them lead. I really like this video because it because it shows the sh the shift in the role in the roles. So why do we need unified leadership? 
Think about it. Special Olympics currently reaches 6 million people with, with ID around the world. We have a long ways to, to go to support their well-being of 200 million estimated people with ID. And on the way, we need to change attitudes, behaviors of 7 billion people without, I, without disabilities. That includes many of you. You and others without intellectual disabilities, whether you may know it or not, are usually the ones who play a major role in creating or maintaining barriers to inclusion. However, through the, this session, you and millions of others can be the ones to responsibilities to positive change. I, I want to share my story with you. You know why unified leadership is in, so important to me. I am, I am 44 years old. I joined Special Olympics when I was 12 years old. I credit that experience for giving me the confidence needed to attend college and get a degree in theater and a minor in radio, TV, film. This led me having, even led me to having my own TV show called Making It Happen. You not only know that people with documented disabilities are twice, twice as unlikely to be unemployed. Up until this last year, I was one of those people. However, during my time in Special Olympics, I took every leadership class I could. I am a Special Olympics athlete, health messenger, a research advocate, and I even served on an international Special Olympics committee where we created an e-learning game to help people with disabilities learn more about their health. I also took Special Olympics public speaking, coaching, and official training. I love these classes. I love all these classes and learn many new skills. Then my daughter, Isme Starlet, was born. I worked even harder to find a job so she could be proud of me. I took any project work I could for Special Olympics. As of November 1st, I, I have been permanently hired by Special Olympics as a unified leadership specialist. It is these encounters and trainings that led that led people to be able to see my new skills with which led me to bring which which led me to bring able to bring a job. I know my daughter is proud of me. Thank you. Thanks, Edward. Yeah, or Debbie? We know there are barriers to inclusion. Let's discuss how to break them down. It starts with understanding what real meaningful inclusion is. There are three levels of inclusion called Diversity 101, Diversity 2.0, and Inclusion 3.0. Diversity 101 is what happens in the beginning when people first try to be inclusive and invite people with intellectual disabilities to partake in leadership activities. While intentions are good, this type of inclusion is typically tokenism. When you have a child who is differently abled, I think one of your first concerns is, will they be accepted, included? I have five children, some with different abilities, including one with Down syndrome and one with another with achondroplasia, which is a form of dwarfism. Through the, the years, I've seen how they were accepted to a point, but sometimes not fully included. For example, going to a restaurant with our son with Down syndrome when he was younger, instead of asking him for his order, they would look at me and ask me. They didn't really ignore him, but they didn't consider what asking him what he might want to order. Diversity 2.0 is the next step. 
This is where people with intellectual disabilities are engaged and their input is sought. As our son with Down syndrome got older, he started Special Olympics. As he got older, one of his coaches got him involved in leadership programs. Through trainings and networking, he developed skills which grew into coaching opportunities and fundraising. Seeing him interact with peers and community, community members is amazing. His opinions and talented, talents are appreciated. And I think others without disabilities have realized that we are all more alike than different. He isn't a poster child, so to speak. He is part of the community. Inclusion 3.0 is the goal. It is where we all want, we want all organizations to strive for, but is unfortunately not where most have reached yet. Inclusion 3.0 is when people with intellectual dis disabilities are given meaningful roles and responsibilities and the rest of the board adapts how it conducts, conducts its business to the needs of the person with an intellectual disability. With the confidence and skills our son has developed, he has become a top fundraiser. Community members look forward to seeing him, know who he is, and I think they see how inclusion and respect go a long way. They have patience when listening, listening to him speak and don't brush him off. Thanks, Debbie. And I just wanna say um, to reinforce what she said about Cole raising money, is he raised $30,000 in the last nine years. Is that correct, Debbie, for the Polar Plunge? Thirty. actually thinks it's about, I think it's about six years. Six years, oh my gosh, see? <laughs> That's why we need to hear from people with disabilities, their skills. All right, Megan. So what is Unified Leadership? Uh, building from sports, the mission of Special Olympics, Unified Leadership teaches leaders without disabilities to value and learn from people with ID. To make changes and create environments where people with ID get opportunities to have meaningful roles, roles and jobs. You may hear the word unified and think it's about doing things together. Maybe you think of people without intellectual disabilities as a mentor supporting a person with intellectual disability. But in unified leadership, unified is more like being on a team. You support your teammates when they are in need but you aren't always right next to them. It is about leaders without ID being inclu inclusive, willing to change how they do things so people with ID can reach their potential. Oh, the story of how I came to work for Special Olympics is re remarkable, the fact that it is typical. I am 26. I joined Special Olympics five years ago when I was attending college at UW Stout for event management. A friend of mine who is also an athlete invited me to a practice. I have been swimming, bowling, and playing bocce and basketball ever since. It is interesting to me that over the course of my lifetime, I was aware of the program, but did not realize it had something for me. You see, I was born prematurely at 28 weeks and weighed only one pound, one ounce. If you're wondering how big that is, think about a single size bag of m and ms You are right, eight, eight, you, yeah. you hold me right, I was that tiny. At that time, my parents did not know what the world would hold for me. My prematurity affected my vision and, and my brain development. As a result, I am considered legally blind and have a speech impediment and an intellectual disability. Because my parents were teachers and school educators, education was everything. Over my lifetime, I have attended typical schools, the Wisconsin School for the Blind, a two-year college program, and then eventually UW Stout. 
I was also more, more interestingly when I was at UW South, I was also in a sorority and one of their service projects was the Special Olympics. While I was volunteering for an event in 2019, I was paired with a Special Olympics staff member uh, to sell souvenirs. During this time, I'm we talked about my graduation from UW South and my interest in working and event planning for a nonprofit. Well, I must have said something right because she hired me for an internship and then a limited term grant position. And now I have been hired permanently as a unified leadership specialist. So you see, I had heard of Special Olympics. I did not realize that they had something to offer me. It was, it was my encounter encounter with my friend with a disability that created me to get involved as an athlete. It was my encounter with a staff person that led me to permanently to a permanent job in my field. I share my remarkable and yet typical story with you because I want you to know that Special Olympics is relevant in your life too. You just might not know it yet. Thank you so much, Megan. All right, Deb, you're up, but I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and pull up the game as you do an introduction, okay? Sure. So now it's time for you to take part in a game. So you don't have to just sit and be a listener anymore. You can get involved. Um, we are going, Jeannie is going to pull up some tiles, some colorful tiles, and they're called inclusion tiles. And each tile represents a step toward inclusion 3.0, like Debbie talked about. This is the final goal that we like to get to on inclusion. We're going to work as a group to put the tiles in order from least inclusive to most inclusive. Um, there's no wrong answer. I've done this activity several times and each time I do it a different way. Uh, so I'm going to read you the tiles and then we will take a look at it and we can start um, deciding which tile we want to go first to be the least inclusive all the way to the most inclusive. So there's acceptance and that is um, where the community of welcome, equal treatment and positive group interactions. The next one is avoidance. Um, that's where we disregard, has no acknowledgement of people with ID, no eye contact, and isolation decided by others. Next is exclusion, where we're the, the, ter the person with intellectual disabilities is denied access, is isolated, and feel has a feeling of rejection. The fourth one there is fear of difference. This is a lack of understanding, uh, limited interaction, deliberate separation and bullying. The next one is inclusion, um, where we have mutual acknowledgement, integrated opportunities and appreciating differences. Number six is lasting friendship. There's ongoing interactions such as unified sports, seeking out friends and staying in touch. Number seven, meaningful inclusion, sense of belonging, defined by unique experiences and valuing individual identities. Situational friendship is number eight, shared environment, taking part in activities together, opportunity for new friendships. And the last one is tolerance, uh, passive interaction, service role, providing physical support and using phrases of pity or tokenship. Now, if you look at these tiles, you see there's a person that is um, shaded in white. That represents the person with an intellectual disability. And then you'll see the figures in blue. And that would be the community of uh, people with no, with, no with no disabilities. So that can kind of help you to understand the pictures a little bit more. As we put the tiles in order, if you have any questions, about what each one of those means, um, please reach out and ask because we'd be happy to identify those for you. So given that, 
um, we can start. And if you, um, when we go back to the PowerPoint slide, you'll also see a QR code that you can scan and it will pull up on your phone or your device also. So we have, uh, Maggie, do we have access to the people who are joining us today? Yes, um, I will probably do just most of the talking if that's okay. Sounds um, great. Especially just since we're recording here, I don't mind being on screen. <laughs> great. So, so what are we thinking of for our first tile for the least inclusive? Um, I would definitely say the exclusion, I think. Okay. Would be my that's first. number three. So Jeannie's mm -hmm. going to move that one over to number one. Okay. Okay. What would be the next level up? It's so hard because for me, like I get very like nitpicky about it all, but um, it, either three or four there. If, let's see, limited interaction. And up to this three. Or... Can you go up to three, Jeannie, please? Avoidance? Yeah, um, probably avoidance, I think I will go with next. And then it would be the fear of. Difference? Difference, yes. And remember, there's no wrong answer. So with <laughs> kind of your, your gut feeling when you look at these and where you think they should be, sometimes it's easiest to put one first and nine last and then work into the middle, but you figure yes. out what it's like. You're right. Um, same illustration. Um, so I would probably go with situational next. Okay. Mm, maybe inclusion, mutual acknowledgement. Yeah, and then acceptance. Okay. Oh, and I forgot about tolerance. Oh my goodness. Yes. That's the nice thing about the tiles. We can keep moving them around. That is nice. Because as soon as I think I've got it in an order, I'm like, oh, wait, but there's that one too. Right. Um, I would, let's do tolerance before exception. Or acceptance, excuse me. Oh, acceptance, okay. Um, and then... Um, why don't you scroll down so I can read the lasting friendship and meaningful sense of belonging. Well, that might actually just be in a good position. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, so should we go up to the top, Jeannie, and see? So you can double check exclusion, avoidance, fear of difference situational friendship, tolerance, acceptance, mm. inclusion, lasting friendship, and meaningful inclusion. Maybe tolerance before situational friendship. Okay. When yeah. I did this, sometimes it helped me when I looked at the, the white and the blue people um, yeah. to see how they looked in the picture too. But again, no wrong answers, so. Yeah, yeah, depending, I would possibly, um, you know, switch um, avoidance versus fear of difference too. But it's hard, cause like I would say, you know, like a disregard is and no acknowledgement could be um you know even worse than just you know some limited interaction it just right. depends on those values i would say to certain sure. people and what that means right um, yeah and and sometimes we might if we have a person in mind 
um, we might change these in a different order, depending mm -hmm. on who we're thinking of, or if it's a certain experience that we've had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so doing this activity, we talked earlier about um, creating an encounter. Um, and this is one of those activities that we can use to create an, an encounter uh, for us to talk about inclusion. Yeah. Great. And then at the bottom, there is a button that says to um, submit. And then it usually, it won't tell you if you're right or wrong. It will just tell you um, that you did an awesome job. And everyone, every time I've done it, it says that I'm right and, and I've done an awesome job. And it also says a percent of how many people voted the same way that I did oh, so, or okay. that you did. So yeah. Jeannie, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, what I'm thinking is that maybe now um, we could, before I won't push submit, we could see what Megan and Edward thought about that. And, and maybe I know Megan for sure has put some things in order. So however you want to pursue that, Deb. Sure. Uh, Megan, do you want to share if, if you changed any of those around? Or sometimes it seemed like the, the slot or the tile number two, the fear of difference um, is, is kind of hard to understand what that is. And I think Megan has a good, a good way to look at that. Megan, do you mind sharing? There you go. Yeah, I can read them in the order I did, and then I can talk about fear difference. Does that work? Sure, sure. Okay. So I put avoidance as number one, and then okay. exclu exclusion, fear of difference, tolerance, acceptance, inclusion, and situational friendship, meaning uh, meaningful inclusion and then lasting friendship. Great. So tell us why, Megan. Why I put them in this order? Yes. Um, so I put them in this order because I feel like avoidance happens a lot more than exclusion. Um, because people don't understand the disabilities or they see it and they don't want anything to do with it, so they avoid you. Um, and then exclusion, I feel, happens more in like a school setting um, and possibly in a community setting as well, depending on what the community like setting is. is then obviously the few of difference. Um, and like what Deb said, I how I explain it is that I always have that that never goes away um because I know I look I have my disabilities in the um physical and they're not fully um invisible disabilities that you can't see so that is always there and so I always know that I'm different and I know people look at it differently and don't always accept it. So that's always there for me. Um, and then I have tolerance because like, um, and in a work environment or even sometimes in a classroom with a group project, you have to tolerate it even if you don't want to um, because you're being forced to basically a, um, and then accepting is accepting who the person is and what they can bring and so oh, and sometimes um, being forced into that tolerance can bring it into acceptance um, because you're starting to actually learn who they are and then I have inclusion which is being like together or not being like forced to do it, it's by your own will. And then situation, situation friendship, because it could be, so for me, um, like a great example for that is with a lot of my sorority sisters, um, they would do stuff with me within the sorority, 
happy, but once we got out of the sporty environment, it changed. Um, but yet I was like included. So it, oh, and then I have meaningful inclusion and then lasting friendship because I feel like you are going to get that lasting friendship from doing the meaningful inclusion. Great. Thank you, Megan. That's great. Edward, would you put those in a different order? Would you um, change yes. any of those Yes, I would put exclusion first. Okay. And then avoid it. Um, um, actually, tolerance will be second. And then fear of difference would be third. And then. Oops, you're on mute, Edward. I hear. Um, let's see the first three. And then um, we got. And then we got um, acceptance. And then. Um, situational friendships and then um, meaningful inclusion and lasting friendships. Great. Great. I, um, I don't know if I have time to share, but I was excluded a lot because not too many people know, but I'm in a wheelchair. So um, I was even excluded and I, this is the first time I'm sharing this. I'm, I'm going to share it real quick. I was excluded from going to school with my brothers and sisters because because the school wasn't accessible. So I felt like I was pulled away from my, my brothers and sisters to go to, a, to go to a different school, which was very, not very good because because you have to grow up in a hurry and not having friends there and just adjusting. And it just, yeah, it wasn't very, and I, I think Deb knows that, but I don't know if Jean knows that. Yeah, Edward, that is tough, especially when, you, the people you know and are closest to your siblings um, are separated from you, so you don't have that security. That would be a, a very tough feeling. Thank you for sharing that, Edward. Yes. Okay. Any last thoughts or questions? I think the fact that our guests and then Megan and Edward put them in different orders makes this a very personal thing for people to do. And again, stressing what you said, Deb, that there's no wrong answer. I think the, the worst thing would be if people had fear of trying this or fear of um, exploring this. And so I'm glad we had a chance for an encounter, right? We talk about right. an encounter where people can understand that it's okay to have different answers. Yeah, I think um, for me, especially hearing everybody else's, it was, kind of like what Deb had said, where it's kind of like you can think of a person or everybody's different experiences, depending on a situation you're thinking about in the moment can change the order as well, you know, especially between the two, um, um, Megan and Edwards, like, you know, they gave examples of, well, this is why I put this here. And it can show that that, that kind of beauty of differences but then still kind of coming together and seeing those similarities of like, yeah, these affect me and things like that. So it was wonderful to hear from everybody. Great. Deb, should I push submit? Yes, let's see what it shows. Are you sure? <laughs> You're in the Inclusion Hall of Fame. You're a legend goat. <laughs> Greatest of all times. That you in the inclusion journey you described with your tiles, you showed how much you value meaningful inclusion. You know that the inclusion journey is made up of new and unified experiences that bring people together in ways that may not have happened before. Of course, there's always more work to be done. We, we need your Hall of Fame skills to accomplish it. Did it give a percentage, Jeannie? I didn't see a percentage on there. That's all right. I just last night when I tried it again, I had 10% and I just thought, well, that was interesting. Oh, 4%. Okay. 
And then it lets you go back and do it again if you want to try it again with a different person in mind or a different activity. So you can take that as many times as you'd like. Great. Thanks, Jeannie. Excellent. So, well, I go ahead. I'll start to pull up the next slide, Deb, but whenever you want to start, you can. Sounds good. So our next slide, we're almost to the end, talks about goals and outcomes of inclusive um, settings for 2021 to 2024. And so we want to look at how this, the goals and outcomes are for athlete leadership and how they are for unified leadership. Um, and so as soon as Jeannie gets to that slide, we will, um, you will be able to see that for unified leadership, there it is, um, our goal is to train 10,000 athletes. Um, so we want to find, train, and engage 10,000 athletes in leadership and skills and combine that with um, having our athletes become leaders in meaningful internal and external roles. And if this happens, what we look for is that this will lead to an improved social and an emotional well being for everyone. And then for unified leadership, um, our goal is to educate 5,000 internal and external leaders to be unified leaders, and also to engage 250 companies and organizations, and then include interaction with athlete leaders. And by doing this and combining this all together, um, we know that people without disabilities are going to behave more inclusively, and we believe that um, our people with ID, our athlete leaders, will help our organizations and leaders to be more inclusive. And that is um, the outcome that we'd like to see overall. And um, it would be great to see this happen before 2024, but um, we wanna work towards that. And it would be awesome to have our individuals with disabilities, uh, intellectual disabilities, work out in the community and seeing and being meaningful parts of our, our communities and showing how they make a difference. Thank you, Deb. I'm going to go to the last slide. Edward, are you in a situation where you're ready to share there? <clears throat> I think I'm off mute now. Mm -hmm. um, but value see the possibilities in people like me believe we can contribute to organizations organizational goal believe we can bring a unique perspective believe that we can develop and lead people pr pragmatic work then closure in adaptive behaviors and processes for example, look beyond roles like receptionists at companies. We make great employees in other ways too, as web developers or in HR, for example. Oh, we just need training like anyone else might. We need someone to see the potential in us. We don't want a job we aren't suited for or that we don't deserve. We just want an opportunity to grow into these roles like anyone else. Enable, like the video said, let them lead. Give us a chance to partner with you to contribute and to lead. We will surprise you. Thank you. That brings us full circle, the slide we had at the beginning, right? Inclusion doesn't just happen. People leading make it, make it happen. So we're looking to all of you that are listening today, and we're going to continue to spread our message, as Deb shared, into the next few years and ongoing to make sure as many people as possible have encounters with Special Olympics and the wonderful athletes that we not only serve, but that lead with us. So thanks for your attention and we'll turn it back over to Maggie.
Thank you all so much for sharing. And um, for those of you who are um, watching and listening and participating, um, one thing I wanted to make sure I asked is, especially if this has reached somebody who is feeling particularly strongly about this and wants to become more educated or perhaps even a part of the programs or the classes that you were mentioning, how can they go about that? How can they contact whoever? Thank you for reminding us about that. So um, just like we have the wonderful online Zoom, you can go to our website, which is www Special Olympics Wisconsin. That's all one word, all spelled out, .org. And you'll see immediately there are places where you can learn more or get involved. Perfect. Well, thank you. Um, thanks to all who are our um, listening and participating. Like I said, thank you so much to everybody who shared and um, spoke about the wonderful work that is happening. Um, I just appreciate it so much. And it was absolutely wonderful to listen to. So um, for those of you who are watching, listening, again, you are more than welcome to reach out to me as well to ask any further questions and perhaps we can get you connected. Um, so yes, thank you everyone for- hey, hey. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. In the rain, there was please do. Um, I was just going to say if there's anyone or organization out there listening that would like to take this training also, um, they can connect with that same email address or that same um, link. And um, we would be happy to, to do this with any of the organizations to help them learn about inclusiveness. Very much so. Definitely encouraging that. Got to meet that goal at least, right? <laughs> Spread the word. So wonderful. Thanks and again. Any final word from Megan, Edward, or Debbie? And then we'll can maybe end the recording. Yes. Thank you for everyone attending and who has been listening. And I hope everyone has a great Friday. <laughs> Thank you. Every time I do one of these trainings, it always empowers me. How can I improve it, make it better? But I have a voice, so, and I think God, I think this is the reason why God put me in this position to be the best advocate I can be. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thanks again, and I will stop the recording.